Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wow, I have a thumbs up and I didn't even start. I am just amazed. <laughs> Thank you, whoever did that. Hello. Welcome. How are you? I am ready. Are you ready? Hi, everybody. Two people. Yay. <laughs> oh, back down to one. That happens every week. Ugh. Anyway. I'm sipping on tea till more people come in and um, we are going to make four cards and I'll show you another one tonight. And I'm excited about them because they're all very unique to me anyway. <laughs> and uh, I think you'll like them. I think you'll like them. Hi, Philomena. Welcome. How are you this fine Tuesday? I guess it's fine. It was sunny today at least. It's getting colder here, but it, at least it's not pouring down rain and tornado watches like yesterday. Mm, but we were very fortunate, as always. Did you have a nice, quiet Easter? So, who's that? Hi, Jen. Welcome. Hanging. Yeah, yeah, everybody's hanging in there. <laughs> uh so anyway, we are going to be using the botanical prints, prints, prints. Yeah, like a prince. Yeah, no, print with an S on the end <laughs> product medley. And I think I called it botanical bliss in my message earlier, which was wrong. There is a stamp set by that name, but this is botanical prints. Um, it's a product medley means you get everything. You can't split it up. And it's item 151301 if you're interested in it. And I will be, I'm going to start off showing it to you because this, quite honestly, I bought this a while ago and I wasn't sure about it. But the more I worked with it here just today, even the more I'm really liking it. So thanks, Jen. Yeah, you might pick up some tips. I don't know. So here's the stamp set that it comes with, which is the thing I wasn't that impressed with. But I love this floral. The fonts are nice. I wish they had more sentiments, but oops. Um, and I like this one too. I'm not. I'm not convinced. I'm a fruit stamping person, but maybe. But since they have fruit, I thought they should have had more like a fruit sentiment too. I don't know. Anyway, plus there's these, which we're going to use on the first card. And then it comes with um, these wonderful die cuts which we're going to use one of on the second card but we're going to use it as a like a stencil and um, I think I have the one I'm using with the card and then you get two sheets of like the floral labels and I have one out of it already and this one I have all of them out but I didn't use these orange ones or lemons and then you get two sheets of these so and then you and the paper, what I like about it is it's black and white on the reverse. So you can do so much with it. And um, you can either use the floral side. Now, I heard somebody say that the fruits on here are persimmons. Persimmons. And uh, maybe pomegranates was the other one. I forget. It almost looks like grapefruit to me, but I don't know. And then that one is, um, nope, that's not striped. That one is a different black and white. Ugh, that pattern. That's that. But I think that's the one I use. Uh, oops, hang on. I think this is the one we're going to use on the first card. Yes, it is. And then this is the other pretty peacock. And this is crushed curry. Which I guess is that pomegranate? I thought it was lemons, but maybe not. <laughs> and it's striped on the back. 
Yeah, they used to have a lemon and a, a fruity one. So who knows? Maybe the new annual catalog will. I, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but the 22nd, us demonstrators will be able to get it on PDF in a PDF file. There's that black and white. Haven't used either of those papers yet. Um, I have used one of these. Tonight we'll use one of these. I think this one. But that's pretty and that's pretty as well. So, yeah, and you get 48 pieces of paper, like always, that Stampin' Up! does. So I like the black and white as well, Philomena. Um, I like the colors too, but um, I don't know. I, <laughs> you'll see. You'll see what we're doing tonight. So let me put them aside. And if anybody's interested in ordering anything under $150, here's the April host code. I had to fix that. I'm going to move that up a little bit so I can try and stay working right here, hopefully. And hopefully not down here. Anyway, this is the first card we're going to do tonight. It's black and white. And it's on thick whisper white. <laughs> And um, so the background is one of their sheets of paper. And then I cut a piece of black, basic black cardstock, and I ran it through the subtle embossing folder, which for those of you that watch me regularly, you know, that's one of my favorite embossing folders. And I thought I had it out, but I don't seem to have it here. Anyway, I don't know if you can see the, yeah, there you can see the pattern, and it's just subtle, which is why they call it that. Thank you. I love, I actually think this one's my favorite out of all we're going to do tonight. Um, here's the background paper, which is the flip side of the pretty peacock, which actually I like this paper too. I like these little flowers in here that, and the fruit. They're not gigantic fruit. Maybe that's why I like them, but I love this. So we're going to use that and this and then remember i said we were going to use the dies so those two dies make these corners and i just cut them out twice out of whisper white and put them on each of the four corners and then um, we're going to use basic white twine which does not come in the kit what what else comes in the kit is um these little bees which i actually didn't use tonight although we could use them on one card and this um, old olive twill band ribbon, it's um, it's pretty nice. I just forgot about it, and I already had a different old olive open, so I used that instead. And then we're going to just dress it up with a little bit of the basic rhinestone jewels. Hi, Nix. Hi, Clay. So this is card number one, and I have all the pieces cut. So let's get started. Oh, and then the inside looks like that. So I thought that was pretty too. I just stamped off with Memento Tuxedo Black and stamped on it just the, the flower and, um, and these. Now I did not stamp these yet, so we're going to have to stamp them and die cut them. So that is this stamp here. We're going to use this on another card, but we're going to color it on the other one. So I think that is so classy looking. <laughs> I just love it. I'm surprised at myself. So let me sit that over here maybe so you can sort of see it maybe. I don't know. Maybe here. I don't know. Thank you, Philomena. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is glue this down. I'm going to use my wet glue. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. I know it still has some in. I have one more bottle of wet glue. I think it's not on back order anymore, thankfully. But I don't, I'm trying not to place another order till I can pre-order for the new annual catalog, which will be in May for us demonstrators. Oh, thank you, Clay. Yes, I agree. Good materials. 
And um, I wasn't tired. There was the first card I did today or this morning, and I'm a morning person. So, yeah. Okay, now we're going to set that aside for a minute, and I'm going to use contraband glue. <laughs> um, you know, the thin, the thin one I usually use, which is running low. Now, as I always say, you can use the Tombow and get out your... But maybe we should do that. No, because I don't have any sponges cut and I don't uh, really have time because we have four cards to make and then I'm going to show you another one and I'll make that another time for you. Um, just didn't have time to... It was kind of an experiment and I don't have time to... I didn't have time to cut the pieces. So we'll see how this goes. But I think four will probably take us long enough. So these are the dies that come with the kit. And I just cut them out of Whisper White. I'm trying to get them right up at the corner. Right up at the corner. Oop. And there goes that glue dripping on me again. <laughs> the new hot glue gun. Hi, Brandy. Okay. I am going to have to get a scrap up here to put this. This glue just keeps oozing out. There we go. And I don't want it oozing in big blobs on these little, these little um, pieces because they're intricate. Now these do cut out very easily. I just ran it back and forth once and the, the stuff popped right out of them. So I will say that for these. Again, this is the Botanical Prince product medley kit. Oops, I'm gluing it down onto the paper and I don't mean to be doing that. And this is the card for those of you that came in late. This is the card we're doing. Okay. So the kit has um, the colors of Pretty Peacock, Crushed Curry, Copper. But the only copper in it is the embellishments, which I haven't used yet. Um, and let's see. Oh, Tranquil Tide. Not Tranquil Tide. Oh, what's it called? Terracotta Tile. I'm sorry. Ter oops. Oops. I missed a little dotty thing. There we go. I'm glad I caught that. There we go. One little dotty thing not out. Let me get that out of my fingernail. And get that glue off of here. <laughs> Yeah, how does one stop the glue from popping out of the bottle so fast? I missed a little dot on this one, too. Pokey tool. This is the take your pick tool, for those that might not know. And it comes with the pokey end, two of these uh, gummy ends that pick stuff up, and then it also comes with this end and I think you can get a, a brush tool also that you know to get the bits out of your dies too but I don't I don't believe I have that I have a different brush tool I'll look up in a minute guys sorry I just need to get the pin back in this glue as soon as I do this because it is blobbing out everywhere okay There we go. Let me get my pin back in. You like the die set on there? Yes. It's, um, it's the only... It's, a, it's two pieces in the... Well, there's more than two pieces in the die set, but um, this is two pieces you have to cut twice to get this look. Um, and for those that didn't see that... These are what the dies look like. They cut out. Here's the two pieces we're using. And I just cut them out of Whisper White twice. And then there's some leaf dies. And then these cut out these Im stamp images. So that is what we are using. Now we're going to use twine. And let me make sure this isn't going to stick to everything. I'm going to flip this over. Just put a little bit of um, 
nail here in the middle, actually. And I'm going to come over, go over this way, and go over this way. I think I did that sort of wrong. I did. <laughs> uh, oops. Now I'm losing my twine. Let me go straight across. Nope. I can't go straight across. Sorry. Forgetting how I did it. This way. Down the middle. And then up here. Nope. Nah. Heaven help me. <laughs> I think that one has to be there and then this one can go here that's not right either alright Deb ridiculous <laughs> start on the end go into the middle down the middle I think nope go to the other end anyway <laughs> How did I do that? Oh, I am sorry. I did this earlier and I didn't have this much trouble. All right, I do this a lot. There's no way this should be this hard. There we go. We got it. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. Everybody doing okay? Nobody sick yet or anything? I hope, I hope, I hope. Thank you for the thumbs ups, guys. Okay. Got it, finally. And that's what that looks like. Now, we can glue that down on here. And there's lines, so I can even maybe do it straight. <laughs> Yay, hi, Nick. Yes, glad you're fine. You too, Jen. It's, you know, I'm in Pennsylvania, and it's it's not great here. It keeps, the numbers are going skyrocketing. But my county is not great, but we have had, I think we're up to 19 deaths now, unfortunately. In my county, my township hasn't had any, uh, but the next township over has had some each direction and beneath us and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, so there is that. Now we have to stamp. So let me see. Did I bring those pieces out? All right. Here's a piece of white. We're going to stamp the flowers. So I have that right here. I have my Memento Tuxedo Black right here. Mine is a pretty old one. And then we're going to stamp on white also. This I'm always here for you. And this, I believe, is the um, Everyday Label Punch. Um, hang on. Timeless Label Punch. Excuse me. Timeless Label Punch. So we'll use that. <sighs> what is going on here? Figures. Every time I do a live, right, it's health insurance company sending a message around about COVID and oh, I do not want to look at that right now. <laughs> I do not. I do not. Okay. So we're going to do these full strength. Let me turn this one upside down and do it this way. Aren't they pretty? So pretty. Love them. What, this, the, you mean the string, Jen? You know, I usually don't have that much trouble and my brain just was not working right. So it's an easy thing to do. <laughs> Go across the middle first, then do the opposite corners. That's yeah, pretty easy. <laughs> okay, then we're using, I'm always here for you. I'm going to again use Memento Tuxedo Black. And I'm going to put that down here. I'm going to put it down here so we can punch it. It's crooked, but that's okay because I can fix that with the punch. And that wasn't even on screen. I'm sorry. Stuff 
well. I'm going to have to move things up a bit, I can tell, uh -oh. so that you can see better. Okay, I'll punch this first, and then I have to turn around and do dies. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you, Philomena. Uh, thanks, Stampin' Up, too, because, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to punch that. I know it has a little line on it. Okay. So I can put that timeless label punch away, which is number 149516, if you're interested. So now let me get the dies and get the stuff off the die machine so I can actually use it. Oh, goodness. And I believe it is this one. And when you do the, um, use these new dies, you want to get the um, the die right over the outside lines, and it will leave a white border around it, but like right at the edge to make it come out right, which sometimes I can get, sometimes I can't. There we go. And I just use a um, sticky note usually. You can use your purple tape. I have trouble with that sometimes, so I don't use that. And there we go. Now we do the other one. And I'm using a big kick, like I've told told you all before. Um, and it's it's getting kind of old. I just I think I just need new plates, and I probably have some buried in a drawer here somewhere. Because <laughs> my plates have seen better days. But let me show you what I do. Also, with my plates. First, let me get this out. There we go. Two pretty flowers. I use a color plate from my top, and it doesn't always work because you can see it's got some cuttings in it and I messed up. But this is my bottom plate. It's pretty well um shot on both sides but i always know the clear is the bottom the blue is the top so it lasts longer now i could just switch and um make the blue the bottom now because it's got a little bit of yuck on it and then get a new clear one for the top okay now we're going to bring in blue dots sorry for my reach and here's another trick which is not my idea but i watched liz Liz, somebody over in the UK. Anyway, she ties her um, glue dot roll with twine or ribbon. And you put it on kind of tight so when it gets down, it doesn't get all loose, right? And um, we're going to put the glue dot on this side. And slide this down, roll it back, and put a glue dot over on this side. And then these go, let's see which one I like better. I like this one for the top. These go up this way, right? Maybe down a little bit. Up like that. <laughs> eh. Not happy. All right, fix this placement first. There we go, like that. And then this one, I'm gonna come down this way, sort of turn this way. There we go. And then we just get our dots. Now, actually, I'm gonna use black dimensionals, which are available online. Last I checked. And this will help hold these pieces in too. Okay, who did I miss? Hi, Renee. Thanks for joining. Liz Yule, that's it. Liz Yule, yes. 
old stable something or other liz Yule's old stable i forget the whole name but i like watching her sometimes once in a while and then this just goes in the middle sort of and i keep getting these little bits of fuzzies i didn't get that straight <sighs> did not get that straight there twist and turn there we go is that straight that's straighter all right now let me sit these over here we're going to put a little bit of bling on but i'm going to put one up here this time because i have a smudgy there i don't know what made that happen but oh well and then we'll put a couple small ones around the black to make them um make it sparkle we need some sparkle I really think I think I will put it over here. Okay, so there's the outside of our card. And then the inside looks like that, but I have a, a thinner piece to use this time. And actually, I did run this is a standard. Oh, I forgot to mention that. This black piece is a little bit smaller, so the the designer paper mat is the standard five and a quarter by four then this piece goes in half an inch on each side so this is i don't know four four and three quarter by three and three quarter no three and a half excuse me three and a half four and three quarter for the black piece and then on the inside of the card um this is actually the standard mat size, and I did run it through the subtle embossing folder also. And then this is a quarter inch smaller, and I just stamped. What I did is I took that same flower, and I stamped it, I inked it, and I stamped off, and then stamped one on there. But I have um, I have a thinner strip, so we're going to use that instead. That was left over. So I wouldn't have to cut into another sheet of paper. So let me glue that on. Yes, that is a good idea for the rolls. I liked that idea too. And I thought, eh, I wasn't sure. But I tried it just today and I like it. And it's working so far. And I don't have to put it back in the box every time. And it doesn't get all unruly and she her story was one time she dropped a roll and a cat decided to play with it and rolled it all the way down the steps and that was the last time she let that happen so and i have a cat so i completely understand that although my cat is not that playful anymore she used to be i don't know i guess she's she's a little bit older she's not old old but you know She's not a little kitten, and, and she hasn't been ever since, even when I got her. Okay, so that's all we're doing to the inside. And again, this is on thick Whisper White. These are a regular Whisper White that I used for this and for these corner pieces and the label. So, and this is basic black. And I'll show you which paper this was in a moment. I think I said that already. It was the um, one of the Pretty Peacock ones. Yeah. Okay. Card number one done. Not bad, huh? <laughs> they do. Yes. Um, they they and they come they come by letters and they say the letters on them somewhere. Yeah, this is the A block, has a glue dot on it. And then this one, I think, is B. Yep. And this is C. And then these that I have the other flowers on are D. And then they have them, um, um, they have long skinny ones. They have this, this is the biggest one. This is F. And this is E. And where is it? This is H, and this one is G, and I think that's it. 
Nope. Oh, one more. And I. So they go up to I. <laughs> now, I bought mine as a kit. They sell them as a kit. Um, but you can just buy one at a time individually. And I, the ones I use the most are B, C, these, these, uh, these ones here. A, B, C, and D are the ones I use the absolute most. But every now and then you get a big, big stamp. But I find that when I get the really big stamps, I tend to use the Stamparatus instead. Thank you. All righty. So let me clean this up and bring the next card in. All righty. Like I said, I think this is probably my favorite tonight, but I don't know. Let's we'll see. <laughs> let me get them out of the way. Okay. I don't know where to put everything. There. Okay. The next one. Oops. We're going to be using this paper, but we're actually going to use the pattern. But this is what we're going to do. And we're actually going to use this, but we're going to use it as uh, with a brayer to make this design on the front. Um, so I have a piece of cardstock cut to that size, which is the five and well, let me measure it because now I'm not positive. It looks a little smaller, but I think it's five and a Nope, it's three and three quarter wide by five. So it's a little bit, it's a half inch in on either side. And the first thing we're going to do is get a scrap. <laughs> and we're going to brayer this. Let me put this up here, I guess. Eh. Let me take a sip of tea real quick, actually. <laughs> Thank you, Philomena. I tried to do a variety tonight and a variety of techniques. So um, this medley, they tell you on the uh, in the catalog and everything that the colors that it goes with are crushed curry, old olive, terracotta tile, pretty peacock, copper, and basic black. But when you look at pattern in here... That is more of a gray color. And I held it up against gray granite, and I don't think that works with it. But Smoky Slate does. So we're going to use Smoky Slate to brayer. And these are the sponge brayers that are in the annual catalog. Let me get this one out of the way. Okay. And I'm going to try and... Make sure I don't move this because I have it exactly the right size. And actually, I remember somebody saying, just go one direction when you're putting your ink on to get an even coverage on the roller because it spins around, right? And we're just going to do that. And then I have to move it because I have to move my fingers. <laughs> I'll try and hold it up here. And I figured if I did it with a light enough color, I actually either could still use the back of this if I wanted to and glue it onto something, or I can flip it over and use the pretty peacock side. Yeah, you get four of these, but you get two in two different patterns, two each of two different patterns. I'll show you those again in a moment. Oops, don't slip, don't slip. I think it's a little bit light there. I'm going to go sideways. Okay, that should be good enough because we're going to cover up most. And there we go. We've got a little blobby there. So, hmm. oh, well, we'll put that at the bottom. So I think that looks pretty good. And there's the other side. 
So we could use it either as normally it would be white, but now it's smoky slate. <laughs> yeah, low tack tape would keep it, but I don't have that. So mm, I need to get some. Oh, good. Yeah, um, that's cool. Well, when you ordered, you probably are going to get not this month's, but next month's, Jen. And I think you get a free one, too. i um, not positive about that anymore with starter kits. They used to send a free one, but like an old one. So let me show you the other pattern. If I can figure out what I just did with those. Because there's two patterns in these. There's this one that has like a little flower in the middle. And then there is uh, this one. Okay, so that's a little bit different. There's the two different patterns. And you get two each of those. So that's pretty cool. I went with the one with a little bit of flower design in it. Let me get that out of the way. And then I'm going to use layering oval, ovals. I'm sorry, circles, not ovals. And I'm using, I think, this one and the third one in here that's sort of loose. You can hardly see it, the scalloped ones. Yeah, you can, Clay. I just... And low tack tape would work too. And I have tons of washi tape I could use, you know, but I just, it's just easier for me to hold it with my finger and hope I hold it down strong enough. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So um, we're going to do a couple things here first. This is the paper that we're using. And like I said, I used a, um, the layering circles. And then I use this one for layering circle. And we're going to stamp on there, thank you kindly. Um, thank you kindly. And we're going to use terracotta tile. Thank you. What, the circles? There. They're so useful. <laughs> They're in the annual catalog, the layering. I like dies that are multi-functional. So this set, I think it has a new number now because I got these before I even was a demonstrator. But this set has quite a few, let's see, 16. And you get scalloped edge ones and I guess eight of each and the regular non-stitch just regular circles so you can do so much with those and so i like getting stuff like that all right let me stamp this i also like stamping i'm going to test it first because yeah because one time i got it kind of blobby i think it's okay i like stamping in circles because if you get it crooked you can turn it any which way and fix it right <laughs> Yep, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Just cleaning my stamp, sorry. On my chamois, which I cleaned. All right, now, let me put this away for now. I don't think I stamped anything on the inside now. This inside is pretty plain on this one. Okay, so we're going to glue these together, but not yet, because I'm going to use the leaf punch which is not part of this bundle or kit it's in the annual it's number 144667 and we're going to use smoky slate which is kind of a weird color for leaves but it works with this one so we're going to do three there we go Put that off to the side over here somewhere and get this out of the way. Okay, so what I did first is I need ribbon. I used this ribbon, but I didn't like the um, 
I put it right over that line right there. I tried to center it over that. But I didn't like the um, linen part showing since this is gray and that's brown and there's no other brown in here. So what I did is I took the terracotta, this is terracotta tile. I took the ornate garden ribbon combo pack and took this terracotta tile and glue dotted it down through the center. But that way I got the scalloped edges, but it was all terracotta tile showing. So let me snip that off of both of them and do that. <laughs> okay. And glue dots are somewhere. Hi, Yvonne. Thank you, Brandy. How are you this evening? Oh, I missed it anyway, Clay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Um, Maddie does a live on Tuesdays, and I just saw somebody else, like a jewelry guy, was going live tonight, and... And then some nature guy I watch is going live a little later tonight. And I'm like, you know what? I can't keep changing the nights. So I'm just sticking with it. I'm just putting three glue dots on here. This time I'm adhering it to the bottom because I... Oops, I got that one a little off. Um, I usually put it on the piece I'm laying down. But I want to make sure I get it in the middle of this ribbon. And I still didn't quite get that one. Okay. Um, okay. And then, so we'll put that down first. Let's see which side. This side's better. And try and get it centered. <laughs> Pretty well, anyway. A little bit crooked. the end doesn't matter too much because it's going to go around the back of the card okay and then I'm going to use the snail just to hold it in place right across centered across that one white line so it's not quite in the middle of the card but that's okay and like that and then we'll flip it over and snail it again the snail again. Actually, I'm going to cut this one down a little bit over here. Am I even in frame? Oops, I need another glue dot. Sliding my twine down. Yeah, now I can't get it. All right, let me just use my scissor. Okay. I'm pushing that down. Okay, there we go. So now we will glue that down onto here. I'm doing pretty well. Thank you, Yvonne. But I really don't need to until the end of the month. So I'm trying my hardest to hold off. I was actually going to go Easter Sunday because I ran over to my daughter's and we did, I did a curbside exchange of stuff and waved to my granddaughters from six feet away and with a mask on. But um, on Easter Sunday, and I was going to go to the store after that. In fact, I stopped there, but they closed at 3, and I got there at 3.20, but that's okay because I was safe for not going in. Blue dar dots are wonderful, yes. That heat, how that, oh, neat, okay. Yes, I, when you get paper pumpkin, you get glue dots like this 
and people don't sometimes know what they are. They're glue dots with little papers on them. I find them a lot harder to use than the roll, which you get 300 glue dots on, by the way. They're called mini glue dots online or in the catalog. And I, I love them, except for the fact that if you don't do something like this or, or put them back in the box, they come in every time they it unrolls. So... And then as you use them, you just tear the paper off. So anyway, okay, so now we're ready to do this and bring in our leaves that we punched out. Too much stuff here. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to, again, take my, now you could wet these. Oh, before I do that, um, I'm taking the Terracotta Tile Stampin' Right. These are from the set of five in color. Um, stamp and write markers these are the dye based markers same dye that your ink is so this matches the terracotta tile ink and i'm just going to go around the edges of this um, gray and that'll make it pop a little bit on the background okay and i just got some on the stem my fingers are all gluey from when that glue was coming out oozing out I just think it makes them pop a little more so there's one we're going to do it to all three you probably don't need to do the stems because they don't show but oh well yeah I'll to turn that one over because I got it on there too <laughs> I thought these leaves looked sort of like the ones in the paper, so that's why I used the punch. And since I got that on there, we'll be flipping that one over. And one more. A master class. Ooh. Well, let me ask, since you brought up a class, would anybody be interested if I did like, um, I don't know, eight more cards or something with the same medley? Would you be interested in purchasing it as a PDF and a unlisted video class? Um, and you'd have to, you know, to make it, obviously, you'd have to buy the product medley, preferably from me. <laughs> I would love to uh, to do that, but I'm doing five cards, well, four plus an extra one I'm going to show you, which is a little more complex too. Um, sort of free tonight, like I always do, and I'll continue to do that. Okay, I'm just taking my fingernail like I always do and kind of going down the middle from the point and indenting it and then you can squish them in you can also wet the paper but if you're going to do that don't do it after you put dye ink on the edges because it'll bleed um you can do it well i wouldn't do it if you're going to dye the ed uh, ink the edges like i just did because it will bleed so but if you're not going to ink the edges or you don't care if it bleeds <laughs> Um, that's fine. So there they look more leafy like. And one of them, the reason I haven't put this together yet is because one of them's going to go under in between these two layers. And then the other ones will go underneath. So let me put that looking at where the words are, put that up there. And you just kind of have to play around with positioning, like where you're going to want it. And then that can be glued down, and then we'll glue the other ones on the bottom. So, we'll do something like that. Now, I think I had it sticking out a little further on the last one, but that's okay, too. So now, based on where this one is, I'm going to put another glue dot on the bottom here. Just kind of 
that's kind of cool. I have it sticking out the middle of that one. This one I should have had up a little higher. But oh well, I can't be perfect all the time. <laughs> Hardly any of the time, but you know. Oh well. I think um, another thing happening tonight is my upline up upline is having some kind of a class type thing too. Okay, so now we're going to just use glue dots. I'll use, um, I'm not glue dots, dimensionals. And we'll help hold those two down by doing that. And I think I put five on because I want to get the middle too. Okay, oops, those didn't want to leave me. <laughs> I end up with those little papers off dimensionals on my socks and carry them down to the kitchen and everything. Find them in the wash, <laughs> you know, it's amazing. Okay, now I'm again going to use the terracotta tile ribbon, which is from the Ornate Garden Ribbon Combo Pack, not not this medley. This medley comes with an olive, um, old olive ribbon, which I showed earlier. This one. This kit comes with this ribbon here, which is nice too, but not for this card. I'm going to do a little fakie bow, which Paige actually taught me. Well, she taught everybody that watched her video, and she got it from, I think, Mary Fish, who's a uh, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator too. Basically, tie a knot, snippy, snippy, <laughs> and it's going to go right about there. Actually, that's too long over here. And maybe just a little bit over here again. Oops, that's coming apart. There we go. Okay, so let me get a glue dot. Ooh, 14 watching. Nine thumbs up. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. The more of those I get, the more YouTube puts me in their algorithm to get more views and so forth. Okay, now... We're going to use these, which are out of the annual catalog. They're called Designer Elements, and they come in gold, silver, and copper. But since we used gray on here, I hadn't used many of the silver, and that's what we're going to use tonight. So, because I think they look good with it. So we're going to just go ahead and put a couple of them on. My ribbon's fraying, I see. And just here, here. And one more right in the center of that diamond there. So that is that one. And on the inside, um, all I did, I lost the cap to that. And that is a pokey thing, so I don't want to. I just cut a piece of smoky slate, um, five and a quarter by four, and a piece of whisper white a quarter inch down. I didn't stamp on it. I could, but... I think I'm just going to leave it plain. So that is what we'll do with this one. It's an easy knot, that's for sure. <laughs> an easy little knot bow, except that ribbon is um, kind of drawing me nuts here. It's fraying. I don't like that. There we go. Okay, let's glue this down. Finish this card. Now, not all demonstrators do the um, insides of their cards, at least not on video or live. But I don't feel right leaving a card like that. So I have to. I have to finish the inside somehow. And it just makes it a little more sturdy. Also, when you have a lot of stuff on the front that's a little heavy, then you need 
um, something inside to help offset that, counter it, counterbalance it. And there we are, card number two. Now, now I cut that too short, didn't I? <sighs> oh, well, I might have to redo that bow. But anyway, this one turned out better. <laughs> and actually, this got a little blurry. So we'll look at this one. So there we go. Pretty easy card. That is card number two. So, so far we have this one, which is my favorite, and this one. Yeah, <laughs> I like to do the inside, although that one I didn't do too much. Hi, Kimberly. Oh, yay. Paper pumpkin is a lot of fun. And the, um, well, what you ordered is the May one. Because the April one you had to order by April 10th. The April one is going to be family oriented. Um, the May one is, um, I don't know exactly what the theme is going to be. Except that it's going to have four of the new in colors in it. Plus purple posy from last year. So I'm excited about that. Okay, here's card number three that we're going to do. Oops, nice if I put it right side up, huh? <laughs> this time I went with Rich Razzleberry. Okay, Brandy. Oh, okay, Jen. That's good. Um Maybe not under me because I didn't see your name come. Oh, well, under your, yeah, okay, never mind. Under yourself, okay. Um, Rich Razzleberry is what this paper is, and just Whisper White, which I have embossed with the layered leaves. This is the new number 152321 3D layered leaves embossing folder, which I have had and rarely use. I don't know why. So I've already done that, and that's just a standard mat size, five and a quarter by four, and standard A2 size that opens like this. And we're going to go ahead, and I've already done the embossing. We're going to go ahead and glue that down. Thank you, Philomena. I did pretty wide variety here tonight of colors and styles I think but they're all A2 that's mostly what we in the U.S. do mostly unless we're doing a a larger fancy fold or something just had to check and make sure I put that right have you ever done that you put something upside down when you go to open it because you thought anyway the opening was over here and you thought it was over here I've done that before. <laughs> okay, now we're going to stamp. And what we're going to use is one of the labels that came in the kit. We're going to use, I used the 1 and 3 8 inch scallop circle punch with Rich Raspberry and 1 and 1 8 inch scallop circle punch in Whisper White. And we're going to stamp Friend from the stamp set that comes with this. And we're going to attempt to stamp thank you. Now this comes with thank you kindly. And we're going to mask that. And I got that idea from Dina Recal, who is one of my uplines. My up upline. Um, so we're going to attempt it. And I say that because, you see my fingers? My rich razzleberry was acting up earlier today. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> We'll do friend first and see how that works. Ooh, sorry. I bumped my um, power cord thing. Ooh, hang on. Okay, that's cool, Jen. I, I'm going to approve that. Um, I will try. I'll put that in my phone. Can you shoot me an email about that, Jen, so that I can um, look at it after the live and put it into my phone rem uh, calendar reminders? I'd appreciate that. Thank you. 
All right, so here's Rich Raspberry. And my ink pad, I don't know. I think something happened to it. I have to take a picture of it and ask Dean or somebody if that's how it's supposed to look. Well, that one worked fine. Let me clean it off real quick. Okay, now how we're going to mask it is we're just going to take that same sticky note that we used to die cut, and we're going to just go over the kindly, hopefully all the way, without getting it on any of the thank you. And I'm going to stamp sort of at the edge here. But I want to make sure I got it all. And then, like Dina said, the key is remove the sticky note. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll get a mess. And let's hope I can get this on straight. Hang on. Do, do, do. Yep. Nope. <laughs> Let me see if I have another label. Oh, drat. Oh, well. I do. I could flip it over, but then the lines wouldn't be on there. Well, that might be all right, too. But, yeah. We'll save that for another one. All right, let me get another note. Let's try that again. Take off the sticky note. I'm going to try it again. Sorry if I'm off screen. Sometimes I think my stamp label's on Crooked too. That one's better, except it got a little blobby, but we're going to go with it. That's the problem I was having with my ink earlier. It gets blobby, and my other ones don't do that. Hmm. But Rich Razzleberry does. Okay. Now, I have cut a piece. I'm really not happy with that either, but I will. I've cut a piece of Rich Raspberry, which really looks crooked to me. Hang on. I'm going to bring in this little trimmer thing that I have and check it because it just looks crooked. I believe it's one inch or maybe it's three quarter inch, three quarter inch. But it looks just a tad crooked. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And this you can't get anymore because it was a demonstrator, new demonstrator only, but you had to be had to be before March 31st. Whether they'll offer it again later, I don't honestly know. So this is cut four inches by three quarter inches. And then this is just going to go right in the middle here. Let me glue this down. Thank you, Brandy. I like the um, rich raspberry with the white. And then we're going to add olive green to it. Let's see. Let's go down a little bit to there. And we're just going to glue this down. We're not going to... Um, bump it up because I feel like but I'm going to put it over just a little bit off center to leave room for that bow yeah that really got blobby let me show you I mean, never mind okay and now this we're going to glue together as well That even has some little fuzzy stuff on it. I don't know. It's really strange. Okay. Now, the kit comes with a bunch of punch outs. And there's one of these on each of the two sheets. So we're going to use that. And I'm going to, again, use a glue dot um, to kind of glue it onto the back of, the, of this because I want to make sure that that berry shows. So this time I'm going to put it actually on the stem of this and get this centered right and put it like that. 
but what I'm going to do now is glue this down. Oh, I shouldn't have put it like that, actually. Oh, shoot. I guess I'm going to glue it down or I'm going to bump the whole, I'll bump the whole thing up this time. What I did last time is I positioned it, but I glued this down to the front and then I bumped this up. But I'm going to bump the whole thing up this time since I kind of goofed that up. It's what happens when you make them earlier in the day and then you forget what you did. <laughs> oh, well. It's all good. There's no mistakes in crafting. It's just different. I need another one over here. Maybe let me get the little ones out. The mini glue dots. There we go. Am I in screen even? I don't even know. Hi, Tina. Welcome. We're using, I'll show you all the cards in a minute. We have one more to do after this. This is card three. And we're using the Botanical Print Product Medley Kit in the mini catalog. And there's so much variety to it. So this is where this is going to go. And then this, um, you know what, I use the all old olive out of the ornate garden but let's try the old olive that came in this kit it's a little different it has more texture to it so let me see how that'll work and if, if i don't like it we'll go back to the other one if i can get it open there we go so this is what this ribbon looks. Oh, it feels soft. I like that. This one's soft as well, but it's more satiny with a little edging on it. That comes in the um, Ornate Garden Ribbon Duo, and this is the one that comes in the Botanical Bliss. So let's just tie a regular little bow here. Hopefully, <laughs> we'll do the bunny ear style. maybe I think I didn't get it long enough it's okay to waste a little ribbon I tell you <laughs> it's not like I don't have enough ribbon right thank you Tina the first card we did was black and white and the second one was in using terracotta tile and some of the paper in this kit I'll show that in a minute and we did some sponge brayering we're just doing all kinds of stuff tonight. Brandy said she feels like tonight is a master class. <laughs> Might be. All right, so we want this to be kind of short. And that's probably too long. Because we just want it to go here. Yep, too long. Okay. I think that'll work. And that one we're going to save. Ah. Sticking. Everything's sticking to me. Let me get a glue dot again to put this on. I'm not real happy with how loose that looks, though. There we go. There we go. You have to just play with your bows till, <laughs> till they look right. And then we're going to put that right up here on the edge. So that is the outside. And then, well, no, we have one more thing to do. We are going to use the Noble Peacock Rhinestones. But I only have two left, so we're going to have to just use two. And I don't usually like doing that. I think I have another set, so I'll see if I can pull that out. In fact, I think I have that out for the next card, maybe. Nope. Mm -mm. Have it out for the last card. We have more. Yay! Let me just get another one. There we go. Okay. So those are the Noble Peacock Rhinestones in the annual catalog, and they're number 149494. 
in case you were wondering. And then the only thing I did on the inside is just put an extra piece of um, Whisper White. Now, another option there would be to use this big stamp because it has this, the, well, similar looking fruit on it. And just, in fact, let's just do that. We'll just do it. Why not? So let me get my memento back. We'll just stamp the stamp down in the corner and do a little coloring. Okay. I'm going to do a little coloring on the next card. I think I'm just going to put it over here like this. Clean my stamp. And let's see what colors we have to use. <laughs> That's true, Brandy. <laughs> the more ribbon you have, the less you want to waste it. Okay, we're going to use old olive, light, and dark for the leaves. And do I have rich raspberry? I do. Yay. We'll use rich razzleberry light and dark for these. Let's start with those actually. I'm going to start with the dark and um, let's see. You know, you probably actually, I think I'm just going to use the light for both of them because the way these stamps work, there's so much shading even with the, the black that that will look darker when you color them in even just with one color. So we're going to do some real quick. I'm going to color those little things sticking off the berry. Those I could have made dark maybe. And I'm just going to use the brush tip. So really easy coloring for the inside of the card. And I don't know if these are supposed to be a different color or not, but we're going to make them the same color. There's little things on the top of the berries. Am I in focus? Yeah, my hand's in the way. Sorry. See, because they're already kind of shaded there. Okay. And then this is old olive. Now I'll use the small tip on this. And kind of the same thing. And you could go over the, the lines. That's all I would have done is gone... Um, over the veins in the leaves with the dark if you want to. Um, I'll show you that on the next card because there's a little coloring in that too, but we're not going to spend a lot of time coloring on it because I did a lot of it in advance. <laughs> I'll look up at the screen in a minute. In case you guys didn't know or didn't see my Facebook post, the clearance rack updated today with lots of new items. Whether there's still lots of new items there tonight, I don't know. <laughs> but they had some things from the holiday catalog, like the plaid paper and a few other things too. Okay, so that's all we're going to do for that and put it in there. And I think that looks beautiful. Okay. Okay, let me see. I have a lot of ribbon, but I do use it, but I have too much too.
Thank you, Phil Philomena. And there we have it. Oops, it just slid. Yeah, don't slide. All right, good. Okay, that is card number three. So let me recap for those that missed the first two. There's card three. We still have another one to do. Card one, which I love. Card two, also very pretty. This one we did sponge brayering and just stamping and die cutting. And this one we did embossing and a little coloring on this on the second one. Okay, and that one uses a pre-cut die cut out of the kit. Okay, so now the next one we're going to do uses Purple Posy. Oh, if I can get a hold of it. Looks like this. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> Thank you, Tina. Yeah, I always do the insides. I do something. Well, I don't always color on them, but everyone has something on the inside. Um, the This one just has two colors of card. And the first one I did of this just was white. You could actually also emboss, but since it's white, you can't really write on the embossed. But anyway. Okay, so this one is a vertical card. So it stands like that. It's done in purple posy cardstock. And yes, I know you can't get the ink, but you know what? We do have Stampin' Blends in light and dark purple posy. And that's what I use to color these in. This is stamping again uh, with that same flower that we used on the first card, this one here. But I colored it in in light and dark purple posy, light and dark. Now here is the difference. This one and this one I did in light and dark old olive. And these two I just decided to just use the light because it still looks like it has shading there. Just made these darker with the light and dark. So I think I'm just going to use, well, I did just use the light on this next batch. Um, and then here we used, what did I do with it? Um, hmm, where are they? Here they are. Nope. I don't have many of these left, but the 2019 to 21 in color faceted dots. I just used one on here. And the purple posy scalloped linen ribbon, really pretty. And the background is done in old olive, and that is done using the ornate floral 3D embossing folder, which is the new folder that I keep saying is fast becoming one of my favorites, and it is. So this is another technique card though. Let me put some of these things down because what I did is, um, this is out of the stitch shape dies, this circle, it's the biggest one of the circles and their number, I don't know, stitch shape dies is what they're called. You get oval circles and squares and they're stitched. Um, Old olive, basic mat size, four by five and a quarter. But what I did here is I colored four of these in. And I've already done them just to save a little time. I can do another one if you want. But I colored it the same way I just did the last one. I put, oh, and I did use, um, for the center of the flowers, I used dark mango melody. Let's just do one. We'll just do one. Or I'll start to do one. I'll just do the little stamens first and centers there and there. And then just light Highland Heather. 
not Highland Heather, Purple Posy. So even though they don't have the ink pad, they have the Stampin' Blends. So it's a really pretty, and they have the paper. So it's sort of a pinky purple where Highland Heather is just a light um, lavender. Now, like I said, on the first couple, even on the flowers, on the other, the original card, I uh, maybe I did shade all the flowers. I used dark Highland um, Purple Posy in the centers too of the flowers, but I'm not going to do that this time. I'm just using light Purple Posy, and it looks fine because there's already shading on the print, the stamp. So there you go. You, you know, that even looks pretty. You could do that. Just leave it black and white on the leaves and pop the flowers out. Maybe I'd make them a little brighter to do that. But I'm not going to go ahead and die cut that because I already have four. So what we're going to do is we are going to place these around this circle however we want them. Kind of want to get as much coverage as I can. And then we're going to bump them up on dimensionals and then we're going to trim them. So that's a different way of doing it. And I had seen Stampin' Up! a while back on Facebook had posted some other demonstrator. I don't even know who it was. Maybe this one I should know. I like the flowers in better. Um, they had shown somebody had done this and they had posted it on Instagram. <clears throat> and I don't know who that was, but um, the idea of it stuck in my head that well, there was like back in um, January or something. So I've been wanting to try it and just never got around to it. It sort of gives you like the floating flower illusion. Good night, Tina. Thank you. Hi, Yvonne. Wow, that's a lot of ribbon. I probably have that much too, Clay. <laughs> uh. Oops. See, those things are sticking to me again. Okay, so now how did I have that like about that? I guess. I'm trying to make sure I don't have a glue dot and I might hanging off the edge there. Now this one, I need to put it like just two. I might use a little one and see how that works. Because if you get them too close to the edge, they'll show when you cut. And I might still, <laughs> uh, we'll check it when we get them all on, right? Okay, this one. No, it just does not want to get off of me. There we go. I'm going to put one more little one. I'm putting a mini one on over here. We'll see how that works. Yep, I need one there. Yep, that one. See, that one's sticking off, so I might take that off. Some of them are going to get cut. That's okay. We'll figure it out. And one more. Oops. Mm, I think I'm going to need a little one on this too. I got another little one. 
Bye, Jen. Thank you. And I have made a decision that I am going to try and get my blog back up and running. But I don't know exactly when. And these will be on the blog. So that is that. Now, this one, I think I'm going to try and take off and reposition a little. Or take it off anyway. And put a different one in there. Because I need something to be here. But not hanging over the edge. There we go. This one I'll cut in half. And this one, okay. So let me get my icky scissors. <laughs> and we're just going to trim all that beautiful coloring off. <laughs> as close to the edge as you can get. These are not the best scissors probably. But I'm not using my good ribbon scissors for these papers. Let's see how we're looking so far. Pretty good. And I would like to give the demo credit that did this technique, but I don't know who it was. It's been a while. I don't see it was sticking to my scissors. There we go. Ta-da. I'll probably put it like that. I don't know. Okay, so let's finish our card. Um, we have to wrap the ribbon around again. Down here. My fingers are a mess. So I'm going to... Snail it again. Right about there. And oops, try and make sure it's on straight. I'm not gonna bother with going across the front with them. Um, Now, pretty straight, and now we can glue that down. Inks Craft Corner. Oh, Nick's Crafty Corner. I wonder what she was talking about. <laughs> She's talking to Nick's. Oops, let me get these out of here before I get glue on them. And we have to do a little more stamping for our sentiment, but we're going to use... Well, I actually had already stamped this in Smoky Slate, but I think, I don't think we'll use Purple Posy, but maybe we'll use Old Olive, although I kind of like it with the Smoky Slate because that sort of looks like the same color as that. So I, maybe we'll do the same thing. I think we will. Um, but let's put this on. Now we'll just glue this down because these are popped up. All right. Kind of got the spacing off a little bit on them, I think. Might put them on top. I don't know. <laughs> there, I think like that. <laughs> yeah, Paige is missing. I hope she's okay. She was, I um, emailed with her the other day and she seemed all right. I don't know. 
That worries me. Okay, so let's do Smoky Slate stamping. Smoky Slate. And we're going to do Thank You Kindly again. We'll leave the kindly on this time. <laughs> Instead of trying to hide it. All right, I'm going to test that, actually, because looks like I have stuff around the edges, but I think it's okay. A little bit light, but, yeah, it is a little light. Oh, well, it's okay. It's all right. <sighs> Alrighty, let's see. I'm going to put four on just to give it good coverage. And we'll plop that down. And then we'll put a bling on, and then the inside, we're just going to put... Um, Old Olive and Whisper White. And here's our faceted dots. And we're just going to use one medium sized one. And I think this time we'll put it over this way. And then the inside, we're just going to use um, Whisper White on Old Olive. Just like that. I'm not going to color this time. I could, but no. Nah. <laughs> and then we have, I have one other card I'm going to show you, but we're not going to do it together tonight. I might do a separate video or that might end up going into a class document. We'll see. I don't know. But it's interesting. And I got the idea... Actually, from a Canadian Stampin' Up! demonstrator, but she's in Holland, right? Well, she was in Holland. Um, whenever the video was done, <laughs> that I saw. But hers was done with stamping, and mine is done with designer paper, which was a little bit tricky. So there is card number four. So let me bring, let me clean this stuff up first. Um, let me bring the next card in and then I'll go back and show all the cards again at the end. Just have to straighten up a little bit here because I have a mess. Okay, um, here is the card. which I see it got a little crooked, but normally if you get it on straight, it's okay. And the concept here is you stamp on three different pieces of paper, um, three different sizes, and then you mat them. But when you're stamping, they're all hooked together. So instead of doing that, I just took a piece of paper which was already all hooked together, but then I had to cut in half an inch to get these rectangles out each time. And then I backed them on Pretty Peacock, but the patterns line up. That's the whole point. So she did it in stamping, which I also want to try, but I thought, oh, I have this beautiful pattern paper. Let me just see if I can do that. And I did, but I got it a little bit crooked. Anyway, um, and then this one just has um, this old olive pretty peacock ribbon on the pretty peacock side, I think. No, I actually have it on the old olive side. And pretty peacock rhinestone jewels. And I stamped again in the um, smoky slate to match the paper. And then inside I just did that. Thank you, Philomena. 
I know, I know. They're they do have good quality, and there's so many things like everything matches. Um, so let me bring all the cards in we did tonight. Um, not like I said, I'm not going to do that one tonight because I think I want to try it. Well, first of all, to not get it crooked, and then secondly, uh, I want to try it the stamping way too and see which way I like better. But anyway. My favorite still. <laughs> Which one is your favorite, guys? Tell me out of these. Um, so we have the black and white one. We have the terracotta tile. We have the um, rich razzleberry. And we have the purple posy with old olive. Those are our choices tonight. So one, two, three, and four. And also this one, pretty peacock, but we're not going to actually make that tonight. Shame on you, Brandy. <laughs> I know, that's an unfair question, right? Um, um, yeah, this one is okay, but my it's not my favorite colors, but... I'm kind of torn with these three. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I know. I have that problem too. But then most of the other stuff is just sitting here because I mostly use Stampin' Up. So I have to absolutely curb everything. Well, I am going to try and have at least these four out on my blog sometime later this week. It might not be tomorrow because... I have stuff I have to get done tomorrow. Yay, you like them all. Yay. <laughs> I don't consider myself an expert by any means. Um, I I would Stampin' Up does three three categories. They try and have us teach, which I guess none of these are beginner. But you have your beginner, then you have your what do they call it? Like classic or something, which is your middle of the ground. You like to use more things, but you maybe still don't have everything. And then the avid, which uses everything and does like extreme um, fun folds and all that kind of stuff. I am not good at coming up with my own fun fold designs, if you know what I mean. So, but... Um, Thank you, Philomena. But I do like using everything on regular cards. And I do think I'm pretty creative that way. And I try not to watch too many other Stampin' Up! demonstrators because I want the ideas to be my own. <laughs> now, I do get ideas from uplines and stuff like that and swaps, but um, I still try and not use those and make them be my own. And when I do use them, I try and change them out. Papers, whole stamp set, whatever. So, but no, these are all mine. Or I might get an idea like um, yesterday, actually, Dina did a video and she had a, her card was entirely white, but it was white embossed on white. Well, I like the idea of the white embossed, so I used that, but I used it on Rich Razzleberry. And it looks pretty, too. But her white on white looked pretty, too. Now, this one, that was completely me. I didn't see anybody else do anything like that. This one was me, also. And this one, like I said, I got this idea from Stampin' Up! Some other demonstrator that Stampin' Up! actually posted the idea, but I don't know if it was this set. And I'm sure it was a different card style. So anyway, oh, I don't know if you heard that. My stomach's growling. <laughs> I didn't have dinner. <laughs> Art Deco. Yes, that is Art Deco. That one there. I love it. I still think that's my favorite. I don't know. That one. Hmm. I don't know. That I think that one or that one are my favorite. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. If you modify it 29%, 20%, it's yours. Huh. I guess. Hmm. 
What's that? Too much math? <laughs> I'll have eights and sixteenths. There is one I want to try. I'm going to be trying soon, but there again, I had to watch somebody else's video to see it. Now I'll do it in different papers, different stamp sets, and stuff. But that's like when I did um, when I did these. This one, the first one I did was somebody else's measurements, designs, whatever. And then I, the only thing I did to modify it is when I used Ornate Garden, these pieces were longer. So I had to make the strips longer, but you, I had to make sure these would fit in the, in the width or it wouldn't work. Right. So the W fold, my starting point was exactly like somebody's as far as the, base measurements and things so but the papers and stuff were different so once i make one from somebody else's measurements i can modify it a little bit but i can't come up with like some new fold or something i i don't i don't know they all look antique hmm. okay all right, guys, well, I'm going to let you go. Uh, I'll try and have these four up on my blog sometime this week, and I'll probably go back and have the W folds on as well. And um, and the ones we did last week with Ornate Garden. So that'll take me a while to get all those up. Um, but those were last Wednesday nights. This was from, I forget which session, <laughs> and, and tonight's. And that'll be what I'll start with as for my blog updates. Are you going to sell these cards? No, I don't sell my cards. Um, I donate some, but right now I'm not donating them to, to my mom's nursing home to let them sell them. But I don't sell my cards. I don't think I, I don't think I'd be able to sell them for much, honestly. It's hard to compete with the likes of Dollar Tree and, you know, for cards. So I usually give some away to you guys, but right now I'm not mailing anything. So sorry about that. <laughs> I will. I'll catch up. You know, like all of a sudden you'll get cards for orders from January through June or something. Um, but I, I know I told you next, but we had a, a local postal worker die from COVID-19. So I'm really, really paranoid about going to the post office now to mail anything. Thank you, Brandy. Yay. I'm glad you learned something new. Yay. <laughs> so if anybody wants to order anything, including clearance rack for any orders up to 150, here's the april host code to use and like i said check out the clearance rack because it just refreshed this morning they added quite a bit and um the new stuff doesn't usually last very long once they refresh and yeah it is scary yvonne it sure is so and i i need um if i'm going to start sending out mass cards or something i need more stamps <laughs> to mail from home and um so anyway, thanks, Clay. All right, guys, have a wonderful evening. Have a great week. Uh, tomorrow morning, come back and watch um, Craft Our Paper Stash Cards. That's my collab with Paige. And I think Linda Kaufman is playing along. I can't remember who all's in it anymore. But um, so check that out. And then the 18th, we have Having Fun Making Jewelry and also the Stuff It collab with Poet Spice. And then I, uh, boy, can't even remember. Then I guess next Tuesday again. So, <laughs> yeah, come check it out. I'm probably going to be using Stampin' Up! products for tomorrow morning's um, 15th cards as well. All right, guys, talk to you soon. I hope you can join me. Don't forget to check out my Facebook group, 
and my Facebook page so below every video as well as the host code will be for April will be on every video in April. Have a wonderful week and I will talk to you again soon. Stay safe guys. Do what you're supposed to do as far as distancing and all that stuff. And thank you for being with me tonight. Why is this thing not scrolling? I don't know. There we go. Okay. Bye.